Let's look at this query. Slightly interesting query. You're saying list the city and the names of suppliers, parts and projects and quantity for all cases when the shipment has all three from the same city. Remember, the suppliers table has a city, parts table has a city, the projects table has a city. We are saying, and of course, the shipments table has a supplier number, part number, project number. What we are saying is, well, get me those cases where all of those three happen to have matching cities. Okay, now you may say, well, why would we ever need this? We may not need it, but uh, just learning how to do this can be useful in cases when you actually need something like this. Okay, so here what we are doing is, we are going to first do the join, get the super table, but select only those cases where the cities match. Okay, so you're going to do select s dot city, supplier name, part name, project name, and quantity from shipments, and then we do the joining. SP first join the suppliers, join the parts, join the projects. Okay, this up to this we have done we have done earlier. We have just joined everything to the shipments table. If we don't do anything else, then what's going to happen is for every shipment, the city and all the three names are going to appear. Project name, supply name and part name are going to appear. That's not what we want. We want those to appear only when the cities match. So we are now going to add some additional matching conditions. Right? That is, we are going to say where s dot city equals p dot city. In other words, the city for supplier and city for parts are the same and the city for parts and city for projects are also the same p dot city equals j dot city right so create the super table but list out only those rows where all the three cities match okay now incidentally in select we had to say s dot city if you had just said select city and then s name p name j name quantity uh, the sql processor would have given you an error saying when you say city, I don't know which city you mean because each of these three tables has a field called city. So if you just say city, it says, I don't know which city you're talking about. So then we have to disambiguate by also including either the name of the table or the name of the alias. Okay. In this case, in MySQL, if you've given an alias, then it expects you to use the alias and not the actual name. Okay, so that is why we said s dot city. Now you could have said p dot city or j dot city because they are all going to be the same anyway, based on the condition. Okay, I just chose s dot city because that was the first. Okay, so if you do this, then you get the result. There is only one row in which the uh, city for the suppliers, parts, and projects are all the same. Okay, so what this shows is that you can have joined queries and you can then have where conditions on top of the super table that is produced by the join. Okay, we have not looked at such queries, but perfectly possible to for you to add on uh, groupings and where conditions and orderings and everything on top of these joins. So what we'll actually do is uh, before the exam, SQL exam, on the last week prior to the exam, we'll do a review of many examples of all of these things right so in the last class on SQL I introduced some new stuff today's class I have again introduced some new stuff the next class what we'll do is a complete review of everything that we have looked at I'll not be introducing much that is new maybe a few things here and there but for the most part what we'll do is we'll use all of these skills we've got to do more complicated kind of queries using the same concepts Okay, now when you look at SQL, till now we have only looked at the part of SQL that retrieves information from the database. Okay, that is called data manipulation language for SQL. But of course, unless you can create tables and unless you can create databases, you cannot retrieve information. So obviously, there is a part of the language that deals with those aspects. So broadly speaking, SQL has two components. One is called the data definition language and the other is called the data manipulation language. What we have looked at so far is one aspect of data manipulation. That is, 
given that the data exists, how do you retrieve information from the database? But we have not looked at data definition language. How in the first place do you create tables? Do you create databases? We have not looked at that. That is called data definition language. Okay. So data definition language has to do with creating databases, tables, and other things, which we'll be looking at later on, indexes, and a lot of other things. That is data definition language, whereby you define data and uh, create your databases and so on. Data manipulation language deals with how do you put data into tables? How do you then select data from tables, which is what we've been looking at for the most part. In fact, much of SQL, uh, the bulk of SQL actually deals with select. All the other things are fairly straightforward. Select is where you've got all the nuances. So that's why we started off with select, right? So you may have to insert information into a table afresh, or for example, you want to add a new supply, right? So you have to add a new row to the table. Till now, we have not looked at that. We've only looked at extracting information, update, right? So data once created is not going to stay fixed. It may change. For example, the supplier may change his address. A part, uh, you know, the weight of a part may change. Supplier status may change. All of that is executed using update. And finally, of course, when you sometimes you may have to delete information from tables, and that is delete. Now we'll be looking at the syntax for uh, all of these shortly. Some of them I'll introduce today. Some of them I'll introduce later on. Okay, so how do you, before you can create tables, you need to create a database. Now, MySQL is a database server, and as you've already seen, a database server can have many different databases in it. And every database could have multiple tables in it. So the database we have been looking at has four tables, suppliers, parts, projects, and shipments. And that database, we called it SPJ New. So that is our database. So how do you create a database? Just say create database, give the name of the database. That's it. That's the SQL command to create a database. So here I'm just taking an example, create database zoo. I just called it zoo. Okay. So once you do that, there will be a new database in your system called with this name. Once you've created a database, you can then start creating tables. So here, uh, our database zoo is going to have two tables. And the first table is called animal types. So we are saying create table animal types. That is fairly straightforward. I'm saying give me, create a table for me called animal types. But now I have to tell it what are all the columns that are going to be in the table. So then you do that by putting parentheses. Right? So I've got an open parenthesis here, close parenthesis here. Inside that we're going to put all the columns. The first column is called animal type ID so that so you just put the column name and then you say what type of information is the column going to contain is it going to contain numbers is it going to contain text is it going to contain other kinds of things for example is it going to contain an image and so on here we are saying this is going to contain a number and incidentally the number is going to be a five digit integer so int five and I'm also saying this animal type ID for an animal cannot be null. So I'm saying this is not null, meaning don't allow a null value. Whenever somebody tries to insert a row into this table, make sure that they have provided a value for this ID. Otherwise, don't accept it. Okay. And in, in databases, clearly you can see that animal type ID is going to be some kind of a key field for this table like our shoe ID or our social security number. Those are keys to identify our rows. Similarly, this animal type ID is going to be a key. And in database systems, you can tell the system, please assign a value automatically to this field. Meaning when I insert a row, if there's nothing else available, give it the value one. And somebody, somebody inserts another row, automatically give it the value 2 and so on so that I don't have to bother about actually thinking up a number for this ID. After all, it's just an ID. The number has no significance except that it should be unique. Let the database system take care of that. 
and that is what is called auto increment meaning automatically increment it whenever a new value is inserted so we don't have to worry about it and the system will also take care of the fact that it's not null so that's our first field animal type id integer not null auto increment and once you've finished defining the first field put a comma then go on to the second field and second field is simple it's just the animal type name that is the zoo is going to keep many types of animals. It's going to have lots of lions and tigers and giraffes and hippos, right? So for each of them, we are giving an ID and we're giving a name. And this name is now going to be textual. In a database system, text values are called variable characters or varchar, which is a variable length character field, right? We are saying, well, I'm going to allocate a maximum of 50 characters to the animal type name, but don't always use 50 characters. If it's less than 50 characters, please save the space. That is what is var char 50. We could have said char 50. If we say char 50, then even if an animal has a three character name like cat, it will still occupy 50 spaces. If it's got a three character name, we want it to occupy only three characters, not more. Okay. If you, to let a database system do that, you call it as a var char field. Again, we are saying not now. We cannot have an animal type name to be null. Cannot allow that. Okay. So that's the second field. Comma. And then we are saying the animal type ID incidentally is going to be the primary key of this table. When we say primary key, what we are saying is every animal type will have its own value for this field, animal type ID. Right. So animal type ID 1 would be no two animal types can have the same type id it's like no two students of a university can have the same id number no two people can have the same social security number and so on okay so you, after you do this you will have a table called animal types this is the command you use to create tables now incidentally this is the way you do it if you're using the mysql console to create tables when you're using PHP MyAdmin, you can actually create tables by just pointing and clicking and doing things. I'll show that later on. Okay. Now, all of this I'm just showing you. You will not be doing anything with this until later in the semester. Right. Now, incidentally, I made a mistake in sequencing these. Once you create the database zoo, you have to say use zoo first before you start creating the table. Right. Otherwise, you want this table to go into the database zoo, not into some other database. If some other database is the current database, when you create a table, the table will go into that database. You don't want that. You want it to go into the database zoo. So before doing this, you need to say use zoo so that it uses the zoo database and puts the tab new table into the zoo database. Okay. My sequence got uh, messed up a little bit, so it came out in the wrong sequence. Okay. So here we are specifying, as I've already said, specifying the primary key. Okay, so once you've created the database and the tables, we can now start putting values into the tables. So I'm creating various animal types. So how do you do that? You do that by using insert. Insert into, insert is like select, is to select, insert is to put stuff into the database insert into and then you give the name of the table into which you want to insert animal types and then you give the names of the fields that you want to insert values for remember this table has two fields animal type id animal type name and the id we've already said is an auto increment so we'll not bother to put any values for that so so effectively all we have to provide is a value just for the animal type name so here first you mention the fields for which you want to specify the values and then you specify the values themselves. Okay. So I'm saying for this animal types table, I want to provide a value for the animal type name for a new row and the value I want to provide is line. So after this one row will be inside that table and the row will have the animal type ID as one automatically created because it's auto increment and the animal type name is going to be line 
Okay, so we are not specifying the animal type ID because it is an auto increment field, so we don't want to bother with it. It will automatically it would have become one. Okay, similarly, we're introducing another animal type tiger, another animal type giraffe, another animal type hippopotamus, and then we'll see uh, if you do a select star from animal types, this is what you would see. You would see animal type one is lion, two is tiger, three is giraffe, four is hippo. Okay, so that's what we have done by inserting those four rows into the database, into the table animal types. Okay, now, now we're creating another table called animals. Right, this time we're going to keep actual animals, individual animals. You've got this line, uh, another line, third line. Every individual animal is an animal, a separate one. Whereas animal type is more like a family. Okay, so clearly, we're going to have for every animal a unique ID. So again, we've got the parentheses and create table animal. Animal ID is again going to be an int 5. That is, uh, we are assuming we're not going to have more than uh, you know, 99,999 animals in our zoo. We're saying it's a five digit integer. If not, we could make that longer. And then we ask, of course, it's going to be a primary key. So we're saying it's not null and it's going to be an auto increment field. Okay, but for every animal, we need to tell what type of animal it is, right? So, for example, you've got this Joe, which is a lion. Then you've got Jill, which is a tiger. And then you've got uh, you know, Handy, which is also a lion. So, that's what the animal type ID is going to tell us. It's going to store the ID of the corresponding animal type. Again, we've, you know, this obviously, this value is going to correspond to the animal type animal types table and it's also going to be not null because whenever you have an animal you have to know what type of animal it is and then of course this each individual animal has its own name and we are saying it's bar care 50 and you cannot store an animal without a name is what we are saying so we we say we want to give every animal an individual name and then we are keeping care of track of the weight of the animal of course, we would keep track of many other things, but for now, we're just keeping the weight. And clearly, we are saying primary key is the animal's ID. That's the primary key. But now it's very important. We want to say that the animal type ID cannot just be any random number, right? It has to be a number that exists inside the animal types table, right? You cannot say, I've got an animal whose type is six, but six is not an existing animal type in our animal types table then you don't know what type of animal this is right so this is important you have to make sure that the animal type id that you're storing in the animals table is one of the values that exists in the animal types table otherwise it makes no no, no sense at all so you want to tell the database system that is that has to be the case so that the database system can prevent you from entering nonsensical animal type ID values right so every time you insert an animal type ID value it's going to go to the animal types table and check if the value you entered is there if it's not there it's going to reject it and say sorry if I allow you to inst insert this then my database will lack integrity so I'm not going to allow you so you're telling the database system look don't allow people to enter meaningless animal type IDs only values which are in that animal types table must be allowed here. And you specify that by giving a foreign key constraint. Right, so you specify that by saying constraint and then you give the constraint any name, right? I'm just saying FK1, foreign key one animal types. This is just a name I made up. And then I'm saying foreign key animal type ID. That is in other words, this field here in this table is a foreign key meaning this has to have a primary key value in some other table in which table this has to reference the table animal types and the field called animal type id from that table okay in other words we are saying don't allow anybody to enter a value for animal type id in this table unless the corresponding type id also exists in the animal types table Okay. Otherwise, the database would lose integrity and that would be a problem. Okay. This kind of a constraint is called as a foreign key constraint. 
we'll talk about all of this later in the course for now i'm just introducing these we'll revert to this later on in the course so now that we've got our animal types uh, animal stable both the tables actually we can start inserting values into the animal stable okay so insert into animals and this time again since animal id is already a key i'm not going to put a value for that since it's an auto increment so but when i'm inserting a new animal i have to say what type of animal it is i have to give it a name and its weight and let's insert a lion called lisa so i'm saying insert into animals animal type id animal name animal weight values the type id is 1 this makes sense because type id 1 already exists in the animal types table we created it and the name of this particular animal is lisa its weight is 200 okay if we go back Okay, so here one makes sense because one exists in the animal type, uh, animal types table. If I put 10 here, then when I try to insert this row, the database will come back and say, sorry, you cannot insert it because the value doesn't make sense. Okay, there is no animal type 10, so you cannot insert it. That's what it would say. Okay, so in like, uh, uh, in similar vein, we introduce another animal called Mona, which is also a line. It weighs 220. Then we insert uh, uh, an animal called Albert, which is a, a giraffe weighing 500 whatever. And then finally a hippo called Hippie, which is 1200 pounds or 1200 kilos or pounds or whatever. Okay, so we introduced, inserted four different animals into our table. And now when we select star from animals, we see this. We see the animal ID 1, type ID 1, the name of the animal, the weight of the animal. This is the information that is contained in the table. Of course, since we have two tables, we can join the tables. Say so select all of these. We can join these two tables on the animal type ID. Okay, and of course, I've given the two aliases, A and AT, and I'm using the aliases here. And then we see the result. Okay, we see that Lisa is a lion, Mona is also a lion, Albert is a giraffe, and hippie is a hippopotamus.